not going to be easy. <laughs> Hey everyone, here at Wine Salon we typically like to be really ambitious and creative. We present to you new food and wine pairing ideas for you to try out at home. But it seems like a lot has changed over these last couple of days and instead of being ambitious and creative, everyone on our team felt that it's more important for us to be able to place food and wine in the context of comfort, familiarity, versatility, and most importantly, availability. What's really available to us at the markets during these hectic times? We had a lot more ambitious dishes planned for food and wine pairing ideas, but now didn't seem like the appropriate time. So instead, today's theme is that we're literally going to go to the supermarkets with a rough idea in mind of what I want to cook. For me today, I want to try two dishes that I think most people are familiar with. One is a classic French beef stew, beef bourguignon, and the other is a classic Italian pasta dish, pasta carbonara. I'm gonna to head to the market and see if I'm gonna be able to find the ingredients to put these two classic comfort dishes together and for you to try at home. Let's see what's there. First thing we noticed right as we walked into the supermarket was that there were hardly any fresh ingredients at all. Mm. Fresh vegetables were very, very limited. I don't think it'll be a big problem yeah. for this first dish, which is pasta carbonara, but beef bourguignon is gonna be a challenge. When I went to the charcuterie section, which is typically where guanciale or pancetta would be located, <laughs> it was all empty, but luckily I was able to find regular bacon. In the dried pasta section, it was almost completely bought out. I was looking for spaghetti, but I was able to find bucatini, which is a really, really great alternative, maybe even better. So we got a little bit lucky there. Finally, when we went to the cheese section, this is when things were really crazy. I was looking for pecorino romano or parmigiano reggiano, but literally, as you see, just empty shelves of cheese everywhere. I found this one bag of fontina and parmesan that's not as finely grated as I would like, but I figured it could work. The one thing that we could not find, which we actually had to go to another Asian supermarket to find, was eggs. And even there, they were limiting it to one dozen eggs per customer group. So hopefully you'll be able to find either dry pasta or fresh eggs. Hopefully by the time this video goes out, eggs won't be so hard to come by. But we'll provide a alternative for both scenarios, one in which can't find dry pasta and one in which you only have flour and eggs. Both scenarios, you'll still be able to put together this dish effectively. Got almost everything. You can see you shopping with our gloves on. What's crazy is that everyone is just so tense on their face. I honestly feel like everyone needs a glass of wine right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you guys will like these two simple tutorials. Have some nice comfort food, open up a glass, a bottle of wine, and just relax. Because so many things are outside of our control right now. We just gotta let let the world deal with it, you know? So hope you guys will enjoy. Teach you guys how to cook soon. Alright everyone, so dish number one for this coronavirus lockdown time. We went to the supermarket, we did our best to find ingredients for a, a classic Italian carbonara. But again, we're focusing on availability instead of perfection today, so it won't be all of the ingredients, but I think it's a really good dish that um, is very versatile for a lot of these four wines. So, but if I had to choose one that I think might be the best, I think it would probably be the rosé. But again, we're focusing on versatility, so it could go well with all four dishes. I know, um, some of the markets when we went there, it was hard to find dried pasta. So if you want to see a video of if you only have all-purpose flour and eggs, Chef Matsuo is going to show us how to make fresh pasta. So a link to that video will be in the description below. And let's get started. So I realized a lot of these ingredients won't be traditional, but keep in mind this was truly what was available at the supermarket. 
First off, we have eight ounces of bucatini pasta. Linguini and spaghetti would also work. It just so happened everybody was dry buying out the dried pasta and all I could find was bucatini. They were also buying out all of the cheese, so pecorino was not available. So this is a fontina and parmesan blend. There's one cup of that. Two tablespoons of black peppercorns, four egg yolks. You're gonna need salt for your boiling water. And that's what's great about this recipe. This is all you need. And the last ingredient that we're gonna be using is a half pound of bacon because I could not find pancetta or guanciale at the supermarket. So first up, we're gonna boil about six cups of water. And to this, we're just gonna add about two tablespoons of salt. There's already a couple salty elements, such as the cheese and the bacon. So we definitely do not want to oversalt this dish. This water will take a while to boil, so let's get this water boiled and ready to go to the next step. Next up, let's cut our bacon into lardons. Because there was only pre-cut bacon, and this is pretty thin bacon, I decided to cut the lardons pretty thick, as you see in the video here. Don't worry. When you saute this pre-cut bacon, even their big pieces, they will come down to size and become nice, crispy lardons. So next up, before we start sauteing the bacon, we need to crush our pepper. In an ideal world, you have a pepper grinder and you can just set it to the coarsest setting. But, you know, given the situation that we're in, we are basically assuming the worst case scenario. So we actually tried to crush the peppercorns with just the back of a pot. That did not go very well, but we found that using a cleaver and just, you know, chopping it down to size and getting it to a coarse grind actually worked really well. For traditional spaghetti carbonara, it's actually desired for the peppercorns to not be too fine because we really want to be able to taste each individual peppercorn. As you can see from the camera here, this is about the texture that you'll want your peppercorns to be. Do not go any finer than what I'm showing you here. Next up, we're going to saute our bacon over low to medium heat. Definitely use some patience. You'll want this bacon to be at a bare sizzle. You'll be able to hear it. And your patience will pay off because the slower you saute this bacon, the more likely you are to end up with crispy, beautiful bacon that looks something like this. Definitely don't forget to reserve the oil. You'll want to separate the bacon and oil. If the bacon just sits in the grease, then the bacon will become soggy instead of crispy, but you'll definitely want to reserve the bacon grease because we will be using that to add into our emulsified sauce later on. And now our water should be at a boil. We're gonna back the boil down a little bit so that it's at a strong simmer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a metal bowl and to that we're gonna add our four egg yolks along with three quarters of the black pepper that you've grinded up. And we're gonna add about three quarters of your full cup of cheese and what we're gonna do is over this lightly boiling water, we're going to vigorously whisk the cheese, the eggs, and the black pepper together. Now, in an ideal world, you would have been able to buy more finely grated cheese, but we're working with what we could find at the market today. And what you're looking for is to keep whisking this sauce just lightly over this hot water until some of the egg yolk just barely starts sticking to the bowl. All we're looking to do with this step is to thicken our sauce ever so slightly before we start adding in our cooked pasta. And now that we've slightly thickened our sauce, we're gonna bring our pasta water back up to a rapid boil and add in our pasta and cook them according to our package instructions. I like to go one minute under because there'll be a little bit more cooking after the pasta is added to the sauce and I like to stir my pasta inside of the water very rapidly. That way I will get a much more starchy pasta water for when we want to finally add that to our final sauce. So after 12 minutes, our pasta is done boiling and now we're ready to put our pasta together. Now at this point, I know what you're probably thinking if you've never made carbonara before. How in the world are these two elements going to become a nice creamy pasta carbonara that I see a lot on videos or in photos. Trust me, it doesn't look great right now, but once you start adding the pasta, adding in the bacon grease and the pasta water, it's like magic. The cheese starts combining with the pasta water, the pasta water starts heating up the egg yolks, the bacon grease starts emulsifying together with all of it and it becomes this silky, luscious, amazing pasta carbonara sauce. So let's get started. 
First off, just with tongs, you start transferring all of your cooked pasta into your bowl with your cheese, bacon, and egg yolks. Once all of your pasta is in, start stirring vigorously with your tongs and your whisk until everything starts coming together. And now once our pasta and sauce is very loosely combined, this is when we're going to start introducing our pasta water. We're going to start with about two ladles of pasta water and in addition, I'm going to add about two tablespoons worth of the bacon grease into our emulsified sauce. From here, it's just a constant game of adjusting to the level of consistency you'd like. If your sauce is a little bit too thick, add a little bit more pasta water. You know, if you like bacon flavor like I do, you know, go ahead and add more bacon grease. I ended up adding all of the bacon grease because I thought I really liked the flavor that it was adding to my emulsified sauce. Once you're happy with the texture of your pasta, you're gonna add the crispy bacon that you rendered down earlier to combine with the pasta, the egg yolk, and the cheese. And now we're finally ready to move on to the plating portion. I'm excited, let's get it done. So you can see here, I'm adding a little bit of water because it was getting thick. I wanna keep it just at the consistency that I showed you earlier. So we're gonna put that onto a couple nice plates and then finally sprinkle some of the remaining cheese and black pepper from earlier. And there you have it, spaghetti carbonara. And our recommended pairing is the 2018 Hinotori Cabernet Sauvignon Rosé, though we do feel as though this pasta dish is versatile enough to work with all four Kaopai wines. Enjoy. Hey everyone, introducing our chief executive Pomeranian Kiki. She is actually the inspiration behind the little fox on the label of this wine here. And hopefully she can provide a little bit of comfort to everyone during these stressful times. I just wanted to share with everybody that we have a lot more exciting content on this channel coming up. Seeing as though no one really knows how long this lockdown will last and that we're all in this together, we're gonna to continue this series of food and wine pairings where we're using, uh, we're making dishes that use minimal ingredients, use what's available mostly in your home pantries and what's truly available at the markets. In addition, we here at Wine Salon wanted to do our part in helping out the communities, helping us all get through this. So we're announcing a promotion on these four wines from www.dropsofgodwinesalon.com. That link is in the description. The four wines are the 2017 Kampai Hinotori Cabernet Sauvignon, the 2018 Kampai Wines Mizuno Oto Pinot Noir, the 2018 Akinomori Chardonnay, and our 2018 Hinotori Rosé Cabernet Sauvignon. During this quarter, from March until June, we will be donating 15% of all proceeds from the sale of these wines to healthcare workers and local food banks in our local area. My team and I are diligently doing the necessary research to find the right organizations to donate these funds to. In addition, any revenue from new wine club memberships, meaning if people become members between March and June this quarter, we will also be donating 15% of those proceeds to the same cause. We hope everyone will try some of these recipes at home. I know it's a really stressful time right now, but I like to tell everyone around me, don't forget to celebrate occasionally with some good food and a nice bottle of wine. Cheers everybody, stay safe, see you soon.